Hi there. Thanks for joining me today. Today I'm going to do a very simple layered applique. And um, it's very simple in the final stitch out, but it's going to be a little bit difficult getting it ready for digitization and digitizing it. Because there's three different layers in the original image, I brought it into paint. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these layers apart. Now, if you have um, better software, like I have this uh, Sure Cuts a lot, it's for creating SVGs for cutting machines. You can also create SVGs for SOAR and um, it will separate your layers for you. I don't think everybody has Sure Cuts a lot, so we're not going to work with Sure Cuts a lot. But if you have something, a program that lets you um, separate the layers, then use that instead of doing this. But for most people, we're going to use paint because it's free on our computer. <laughs> and um, so we're just going to jump right into, we're going to basically take these three apart, digitize them separately in SoArt, and then bring them all into SoArt Pro to make it one file. Okay. All right, so first of all, let's go here and use freeform selection. I'm going to take, nope, let's not do that yet. Let's get this one. So let's go around this dark pink on the inside. This is just a flower that I found on Etsy. Um, I got in a pack of images that I bought on Etsy. It's a PNG file. Well, it was an SVG file, but once I brought it in here, I'll have to save it as a PNG. Now you might want to get slower, go slower than I did. But um, this is the basic idea of what we're doing. We're just taking them out of each other. Okay, so let's see. Does this have a dropper? Ew, it does. There we go. Let's wait. We don't want to do that. <laughs> we want to take white. And we want to take our bucket and we want to get rid of all that pink. So we still have a little bit of that pink, but we're not going to worry about it too much. What am I thinking? We don't want to do that here. Don't worry about that. I forget what I said. <laughs> okay. So what we want to do though, what we actually do want to do is come here to the color picker, grab this pink and fill in this middle part. Okay. And that's going to be the piece that we take into SoArt first. So I am going to take this. I'm going to copy it. I'm going to open SoArt. And I'm going to choose Edit and Paste. Now, however you get your 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 things separated is up to you. However you bring it into SOAR is also up to you. This is just what I'm doing. I am using it in paint, copy and paste it. I forgot to make it small though, so it's going to come in really big. <laughs> and that's totally fine because the bigger the better. Okay. So we want to crop these edges here. Okay, and click OK. Okay, and now we're going to make it so that it fits into my hoop. This is just way too big. It will never fit. <laughs> so 3.9 is for my hoop. So let's zoom in now. Ooh. Okay, that's the right size for me. Okay, so from here, if you already know how to digitize, that's awesome. You can skip all the way to the Sew Up Pro part. But for those of you who don't, we're going to take this piece. We're going to go over here to the stitch image. Well, let me get out of here. Click on that before I do anything. Make sure that we have only two colors, two meaning the white in the back and the pink in the front. Oh, I had a feeling. So look at that, even though you and I can see that it's 160, it still did the pixelization shuffle in the air between 
programs. <laughs> so we really just need two colors. We don't need to be too worried about the pixelization because there's no detail. So I'm going to go down to 50 immediately. And the only detail I'm trying to keep is right in here, these little pieces. Okay, so let's see. And then down to two. Simple, simple, simple. Okay, so let's go ahead and actually fill it in with the sew art color too, just, just to make sure that all the little pieces are filled in. Okay, now let's go over to our stitch image. Okay, and we're going to choose applique border because it's going to border around the flower. If we chose applique center line, it would try to go through the middle. Okay, so we're gonna do applique border. We're gonna choose satin. Okay, you have all these different borders that you can use, but we're gonna choose a satin. And we're gonna choose it to have, or we're gonna have the height be, let's say 30 is a nice, fat, tall um, satin stitch, okay? And the length in between, we're gonna have is two. That's the perfect length for almost all um, satin stitch on here is two. And then you can vary this up here, the height. Okay, so we're gonna look for a flat spot for it to start because wherever it starts, it's also where it's going to end and you want it to be able to meet up together. And luckily, we have a little flat spot right on the top. So make sure that you're in the pink when you click. So go, go ahead and click it and it's gonna give us our stitch out. And now remember that Sewer is not very good at the satin stitch directional. And sometimes it can be choppy if it's trying to follow a line. So don't be too hard on your stitch out whenever it does come out. Um, you just got to keep working at it. And if it's something that's really important, you have to get the stitches perfect. When you go into Sew Up Pro, you can edit the stitches and change things. I don't personally know how to do that, but there are tons of videos on YouTube that can help you. If you're just not happy with how Sew Art has the stitch out, that's fine. Use Sew Up Pro. Um, so, so this is done. This piece right here, we're gonna hit File, Save As, and what's gonna pop up is an opportunity to save the image as a file so that we don't have to, to do that whole um, processing again. But I'm not gonna worry about that. I don't need to do that. I'm gonna hit Cancel. All right, and so I'm gonna have it saved to my desktop. And this is the save embroidery file screen. Whenever you hit cancel or whenever you're done saving your image, this is gonna automatically come up after that. And so I'm gonna do this as part one applique flower. Okay, so I'm gonna choose save. And now we're done with that one. Okay, and see, it'll only show you the one part, the one move, but what we really have here is we have our die line. It's gonna go down. It's gonna show you where on your on your fabric or on your, um, uh, if you're doing this as an in the hoop thing, it, on your stabilizer. So you'll get your die line. And then once you put your fabric down, it's gonna do a tack down stitch. And for the satin stitch, the tack down is a um, zigzag stitch. And then, then you'll do your cut out, you'll cut around your flower, and then the final stitch will be the satin stitch. Okay, so I am going to clear stitches and I am going to click on the stitch image button again to get out of this screen. And I am going to choose new. Okay, now I'm gonna go back into my paint. All right, and then I'm gonna grab this very, we're gonna take these out of here. Oops. Preform selection. We're gonna get, oops. No, we're not. <laughs> no, undo. I did not want that to happen. Okay. All right, so we're gonna move these guys over here. And we're going to rectangular select and just take this whole thing in here. We're not gonna bother trying to fill in that hole here because it's just gonna pixelate it anyways. So we're gonna copy, go into paint, I mean into sew art, edit and paste. Oh, forgetting that it's gonna be huge. Okay. 
Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and resize it again, but down to 3.9. However, when I bring it into Sew Up Pro, because it has to be less than the big pink flower, I'm gonna resize it smaller once I have it in there so I can look at it perfectly. Okay, so for us, there's three colors here, but for Sew Art, there's probably gonna be 200 colors, 186. <laughs> so we'll go through the same motions like before. Let's um, go up here to our bucket tool. All right, and let's grab the dropper and let's fill that in, okay? So first things first was we filled in the middle. Now let's take this white and do our best around the edges of that. Oh, actually let's not do that because look how fuzzy it made it. Whenever we zoomed in, it's keeping all the pixels around the edges because we still have so many pixels. So we mostly just wanted it to be in that cut, those two colors in our eyes so that we can bring this down to three colors and then get rid of the original pink. So let's go ahead and bring it down to 100 and then bring it down to 50, bring it down to 20. Oops, what did I do? I thought I did 20. Okay, and now let's just jump to three. Okay, so it turned my back pink to a light pink, but we're just gonna take this white, cover that, cover that, and there we go. It has isolated our inner flower. Okay, now from here, we don't have to do anything else. We can go straight into the stitch image button. And luckily all of this stuff is still the same. Everything is the same. So I'm going to right back to that same spot it looks like on this one. There's a flat spot. Make sure you're inside of the dark pink. And it's gonna give us our applique stitch out. Okay, so again, to file, save as, cancel, and then desktop, part two applique, oops. Okay, so our three steps are gonna be there for this one as well, okay? So let's go ahead and clear stitches now and go back out to the regular canvas, click new, and then go back into our paint. We're gonna grab this guy. This is gonna be very simple part. Okay, we're going to copy, go back into sew art, edit, paste, Bring it down. Oh, it's gonna to need to be much smaller than that. <laughs> so let's just make it two for now because we don't need to digitize it that closely. All right, so this is probably gonna have, again, you know, 200 colors. So let's bring it down to five. Let's see if we could do that. Okay, good. I'm just a little chicken of pushing the three and have everything meld together, but the only way to find out if it's gonna do that is by doing it. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna grab our, our bucket tool, grab the white and fill in those pinks, grab the black, fill in those blacks with the sew art colors. I just like to do that. Okay, and now we should have two colors. Boom, beautiful. All right, so we're gonna go right into stitch image from here. And now we're not gonna applique these, we're just gonna let them be regular fill stitches. Okay, and that'll be really cute and it'll kind of tie everything together. Okay, so you wanna think about the order that the machine is gonna have to go in. So you can go this way and up and over or go this way back down and over, but don't go to those three and then skip back over to this one because that's gonna give you a jump stitch that you're gonna have to cut that's gonna lay across everything else and it's gonna be a pain in the butt. So um, you want your jump stitches to be as close to each other as humanly possible so that they're easy to cut. And sometimes if they're close like this, you don't even have to worry about cutting them because nobody notices. All right, so that's all there is to that. We're gonna choose save as, cancel, and then desktop, part three, Click save and it's all done. Okay, so I am going to get out of SoArt.
I'm going to close all of this stuff. Now that we have all of the stuff, all the pieces that we need, we don't need to save any of that. But if you're paranoid about it not working out, just go ahead and leave all that stuff open. Okay, so um, now we need to open So What Pro. And that's this little sewing machine icon down here on my bottom. Not my bottom. I can just hear my kid giggling about that. That's the only reason <laughs> I had to clarify. Do 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 do. Hope you're having nice weather where you are. It's really beautiful here. We had a really, really, really wet spring and we're finally getting some sunshine and dryness. Okay, so we're in Sew Up Pro now and we're gonna get the opportunity to take that applique, that three piece applique and make it into one piece, okay? So let's choose File, Open, and we're gonna start with part number one, applique flower, choose Open. Okay, so already I can see that if I was another digitizer, I would not like how that's like that. Some pieces are a little bit off. They look a little bit staggered. But for me, I don't really care. <laughs> okay, so up here we're going to get to move things around, um, change it, label it. Like this one right here, number one, is our die line. And I really like this feature because it helps me remember what everything is. Tack down and final stitch. Finest stitch. <laughs> okay, so that's great. There's our original flower. All is well. I need to fix my hoop. I don't know why it has me on such a big hoop. Oh, because it brought it in as too big of a size for some reason, even though I sized it right. Okay, so now we have this piece. What we're going to do is we're going to go File, Merge, and we're going to choose our Part 2. Click Open. And I knew that that one was going to be too big, so I'm going to resize it down to, let's say, 2.5 and see what happens. Okay, that is much better. And that'll give us lots of opportunity to see the fabric that's under the first one. Okay, so we're going to go from there. And now we're going to go to Edit. No, we're not. We're going to go to File and Merge one more time, Part 3. Click Open. Oh, and they're already, that's a little bit too big, but still. So let's do 0.75 and see how that looks. Cute. That's really cute. Okay, that is literally all there is to doing this. And I know that that was a really long explanation, but once you get the hang of it, you're going to have a much easier time with all of this. Okay, so let's see. This is our die line. Tack down, final stitch, and this is our fill, fill stitch. Okay, and then from here, we just hit file, save. I always choose save as, I don't know why. Oh, because whenever I choose save, it just, t it takes it to, um, my documents, which I don't ever save anything in there. So let's do three part, oops, three part applique. Oh no, let's do layered applique. Okay, save. Okay, and when I get my machine set up and I get ready to transfer this stuff over to the machine, I will start videotaping there. And um, that was just such a weird way to say it. <laughs> Anyways, I will meet you guys again um, with the machine. See you in a second.
Okay guys, we're at the machine. Now, um, I'm not sure what machines everybody's using, so I didn't show you guys how to drag and drop it, but it's very, very simple. You just copy and paste it into the removable disc. Make sure your machine is on when you do that. So here's our three-piece applique. We're gonna push up on it, and we should have seven stops. We should have three stops for the first one, three stops for the second, and then the fill stitch at the end and that looks exactly like what's going on here okay so I just wanted to show you guys these if you want to double check choose check colors on the brother se 425 and it'll show you all of your pieces okay on this machine that's all it's going to give you it's not going to give you directions on what each of them are everything that I put in the in the comments none of that's going to matter on this machine so all right, we're going to get started. I'm going to see you in a sec. This is going to be our die line. Oh, I found the cutest fabric. Okay, so you have to just make sure that this fits over your fabric. Now, I'll post in underneath, but make sure that your fabric is ready for applique. And that's if you use the um, um, iron-on stabilizer from Heat and Bond, or if you use the stuff from that the Scan and Cut comes with. That stuff is really good too. But that is, it's an iron-on stabilizer, which also temporarily can adhere it adhere. Is that the right word? Adhere it to if you iron it on there. Okay. But we're just going to have it stabilized with this stuff on it. And we're just going to float it over the top of this, okay? And if you've noticed, I'm floating as well in my hoop with um, double-sided sticky tape. Okay, so that's our tack down. Here is where we're going to take our fabric out and I'm going to cut around the edges. It's going to take me a while, so I'll be back with you when it's all cut up, okay? That is so cute. Okay, so you can skip forward and do the next die line and tack down on the next part of the flower, and then skip back and do all the satin at once. You can also order that in Sew It Pro, change your um, thread sequence so that it can do the satin stitch all at the end if you want. I'm going to go ahead and do the satin stitch through um, like like how I have it programmed. And um, just a tip for satin stitch, go ahead and use the same bobbin color underneath just in case in some parts it might be a little dense and it pulls a little bit hard. It's not that big of a deal. Just um, use, use the same color. Um, also, I'm using this roll of Sulky, S-U-L-K, film over the top of this. And that's so that my satin stitch is really nice and the nothing gets caught in the, the fluff on the terry. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and cut that down a little. I used to leave out waving pieces and that was a disaster. <laughs> Okay, but this isn't necessary. This is just something you can do if you have it. Okay, so it's done, but it took forever. But then I remember that most embroidery does. <laughs> Okay, so let's go ahead and peel off all the film from the outside as well as the inside. Come on, baby. There we go. Since it doesn't have any cloth that it's going to be competing with in the back, we're going to be okay. All right, so I'm going to put a white in the middle, but I don't know how big of a piece I need yet, so I have to hook it back up and then let it run through its next course for the next set. So let's go ahead and put the presser foot down and press start and this is going to give us our die line for the one in, or our tack down for the middle part. Okay, let's 
So it's quite a big piece, but that's okay. I'd rather have a big piece and cover it all than not have it on there, not have enough. Okay, so now it's gonna give us our tack down again. Okay, now I'm gonna cut it out and put it back on. I'll be with you in a minute. Okay, so some of this white is probably gonna show through because I'm not the best cutter and I don't have applique scissors yet for some crazy reason I haven't bought any yet. But you can use Sew Up Pro to turn it into an SVG and cut it out on your cutting machine. So if that is something that you're set up to do, um, you can use, S use Sew Up Pro to create SVGs. It's pretty awesome. And you can even have it like bump it up a little bit so it goes over the tack down a little bit, or the die line I mean. All right, so I'm gonna press play and see you in a sec. Okay guys, it's off of the thing. I don't know why the video is so close up. Oh, there we go. It just wasn't letting me zoom out. So there it is. I'm trying to get it in the sun so you can get the best view of it. I'll need to trim off my pieces, of course, but um, overall I think it did really great. Let's get a close up. Other than my non-existent cutting skills, I think it turned out really, really adorable. So I hope that this was helpful for you guys, and if you have any questions, you know, please feel free to ask on YouTube as well as find me um, in one of my groups on YouTube or on Facebook and if I can't answer you on Facebook there's definitely going to be somebody in the group who can so um, don't get discouraged alrighty talk to you guys soon bye bye